you will meet a lot of new words and terms as you learn organic chemistry. Learning organic chemistry has even been likened to learning a new language. Before we start, we need to be able to clearly, concisely and consistently name organic compounds. Let's start with an example. This is 2-bromo-3-methyl-pentane. But why do we call it that? The starting point is to identify the longest carbon chain. In this molecule, it's there. How many carbons in that chain? Well, there are five. And that is the basis of the pent in the pentane component of this name. That's the root name of this molecule. Pent indicates five carbons. There's a different prefix for each number of carbons. From five carbons onwards, there's a link back to your high school geometry. So just as a pentagon has five sides, pentane has five carbons. Similarly, hexane to hexagon, heptane to heptagon, and so on. The first four prefixes are less familiar or obvious. One carbon is meth, two carbons eth, three carbons prope, and four carbons but. I think the only way you're going to remember these is either by learning the names themselves or perhaps committing an interesting mnemonic to memory. A few possibilities come to mind, you might have one of your own. So, applying that knowledge, this three carbon compound must be propane. With eight carbons, we're thinking octagon, and this guy is octane. Six in a ring, it's a hexane. To indicate the ring, we use the prefix cyclo. So this is cyclohexane. You can imagine many other combinations and options. So back to our example, 2-bromo-3-methyl-pentane. We've worked out the pentane portion. Remember that comes from this longest chain in here which contains the five carbons. We then need to indicate the position of the groups that are attached, sometimes called substituents. In this compound there's a bromo, a bromine atom, that's a carbon 2, so it's 2-bromo. There's also a 1-carbon group attached, that's a methyl group, thinking back to our prefixes, 1-carbon meth, or meth, that's methyl. So 2-bromo, 3-methyl, pentane. Notice that we've numbered from this end of the molecule. We've done that to keep these numbers here as small as possible. And that's the other rule to keep in mind. If we'd numbered this as carbon 1, then we would have the bromine on C4, the methyl group on C3, and uh, we want to avoid that. So this is 2-bromo-3-methylpentane rather than the other way around. It's that even when we draw it this way around. We start numbering from this end to keep the numbers as small as possible. So this is 2-bromo, 3-methylpentane, just drawn from a different orientation. Now it won't always be a bromine and a methyl group of course. So as this compound is 2-bromo-3-methyl, we might also have a different halogen, fluorine, chlorine or iodine, which are identified using these descriptors. Likewise our branch may have more carbons in it, 
we use the prefix as we met earlier for ethyl, propyl, butyl groups, and so forth. How about this guy? Can you name this compound? Well, we've got our five carbons in the longest chain. So this is another pentane. We've got a bromine on C2. Our methyl group, that one carbon branch, is now over here on C4. So this compound is 2-bromo-4-methyl pentane. Bromine on C2, methyl group on C4. Notice that when writing the name, the number comes immediately before the group that it describes. Note also that where a number is followed by a letter, we use a hyphen between those. Where two letters follow each other, as it were, so the methyl runs into the pentane here, there's no hyphen, there's no space. Note also that when we write the name of the compound, the groups attached are listed in alphabetical order. So bromo comes before methyl in this example. Likewise, chloro would come before iodo, ethyl before methyl, and so on. One last example for you to try. What is this compound? Were you tempted to call it 2-bromo-4-ethyl pentane by extension of the previous example? Hopefully not, because that misses the longest chain. If we number, it's not the 5-carbon chain we would have been looking at previously through here, but in fact down here, 6 carbons all attached to each other. So this is now a hexane. There's a bromine on C2, there's a methyl group on C4. So this is 2-bromo-4-methyl hexane. One more thing before we go. When a carbon-carbon double bond is present, we change the ending of the name. So this guy, with three carbons and one double bond, is propene, with an E. With eight carbons, we have octene. In this case, we need to indicate the position of the carbon-carbon double bond because clearly it could occur anywhere along the chain. We use a number, and we keep that number as small as possible. So in this example, we number from the left-hand end. And this is 2-octene, indicating that it's the second bond in from the end of the molecule that is the double bond, sometimes written oct-2-ene. In a similar manner, if there's a carbon-carbon triple bond present, like this example, we use a Y. The name becomes propine, or with eight carbons, it's 2-octine or oct-2-ine. These names are linked to the functional group families from which these compounds come. Carbon-carbon double bond is indicative of the alkene family, the triple bond, the alkynes. More about these and other functional groups another time.